Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Commander Deck Tech. I am Toti, your host for Channel Seraphim, and today we have something a bit special. Our commander will be Thraximander, but uh, this is a bit of an interesting take on him. It's not a normal Thrax deck. This is what you want to be focusing on right now. Yep, this is going to be a zombie tribal deck. So, just a bit of, a, of the, the bat for why I chose this commander. I was basically, well, first off, the two colors for zombies are black, obviously, as always, and then more recently blue with Innistrad and all the, the lords and white, blue zombies that they have and stuff. So blue and black are going to be our two zombie colors, mostly. Um, then I was basically between Treximander and Grim Grim. Those were my two commander options. I started actually off with Grim Grim. Um, and he was he was okay, but I found that I just wanted something that had more, like this. Or let's let me say that again. I found that Thraximander's effect allowed me to interact better with my opponents because this is just an edict, and sometimes you just need that as removal. Um, the Grim Grim does have some some combos with uh, some cards in our deck, but. Overall, I felt that Treximander gives us a bit more options, and it opens us to red, which gives us a couple more zombies options, not not too many. But yeah, enough of this. Let's let me let me just show you what the deck looks like. Okay, so this is our zombie curve right here. At one, we have Grave Crawler, which is a no-brainer. <laughs> Get that brain zombie? No. Anyway, uh, he's an odd include in any zombie deck. Then. Carrion Feeder, he is pretty decent as well, mostly as a sacrifice outlet, just because I think you normally want to have some of these sacrifice outlets in your EDH deck just so stuff doesn't get stolen. And uh, then again, it also works fine with our Grave Pact that we will be having in this deck that I'll show you in a little while. But yeah, spoiler alert, we'll have a um, Grave Pact and this works pretty well with that. So that's the one. Then a two with a dredge. It's a classic Stromglad Crusader. Just a great dude. Protection from white is decent. He can get some evasion and pump in if he needs to. Just a decent two drop. Shepherd Abroad. This guy is amazing. Can help us kill off a bunch of players at the same time. Ractus Guild Mage. Just a two two with some decent abilities. Basically removal on a stick. And if you need a, a creature for some chump blocking action, he can do that as well. And then the polluter, he can be um, he can be recurred with some of the some of our, our effects to basically reuse this every turn and deal cycle every turn and deal damage to, to players every turn. We have a we have a couple of of cards that help us recur that. One of them is, for example, Lord of the Undead, that I'll get to in a moment. And then we have a couple of lands that allow us, allow us to recur our, our zombies as well. Um, with a dredge. Again, one... I'm going to get a bit ahead of myself here, but one of the, of the themes that we are going for in this deck is... Well, basically, we are kind of like an aggro deck. We're going to just drop a bunch of zombies. Um, the problem with aggro decks traditionally is that you can maybe survive one wrath, you can possibly survive two, but if someone wraths you a couple of times, you're pretty much dead. I mean, there's no really getting back from that. You can't, sh aggro decks just don't work that great in commander. You can't, you can't really kill everybody off just by being aggro. aggro. Um, one on one, sure it works, but three players you can't really, um, kill by just being aggressive. So, that being said, our game plan is to, once people just kill all of our guys off, we will use some of these effects, just like uh, living death effects. Uh, like this guy, for example, that I will as well get to in a minute, both already defiled. What he does is, if you exile him, he 
well, the minions get plus one, plus one is pretty relevant. What he does is he basically returns all of your graveyards to the battlefield, all of your zombies to the battlefield uh, if you pay three. So that's that's pretty decent. Uh, so then what I was, the, the reason I mentioned this is that with a dredge also helps us um, remove cards from our opponent's graveyards because we don't want them returning their own stuff as well because we have this but we also have other cards that I'll show you in a moment like uh, Patriarch's Bidding, Living Death Itself and some other cards that do the same kind of effect. So that's another plus for Withered Wretch aside from him being a zombie and a good guy. So that's our two. Then at three we had a couple of lords. Uh, zombie Master lets all our guys regenerate and have Swamp Walk which is Pretty good because a lot of players play uh, swamps, and we also have an Orborg to make all land swamps anyway, so that's pretty decent. Then I'm dead gladiator, just a decent guy uh, that you can just, if you need some card advantage, you can keep recycling him and returning him to your to your hand if you have enough mana. Stronghold Assassin works pretty well with cards like Gravecrawler. You can kill a bunch of guys, and he's removal and also a zombie. Basically, all of the cards in our deck are zombies. I'm gonna, um, I'm not gonna say with every creature and it's a zombie because they all are. So, Lord of the Undead, our first uh, Lord, basically he pumps all of our zombies and returns them to our hand from the graveyard. So, pretty good, one of the good ones. Lich Lord of Unks, this. Doesn't pump our guys, but he puts a lot of small uh, zombies onto the battlefield that we can afterwards sacrifice to some of our other effects. And he also allows us to kind of do like a gem, uh, gem pump polluter and uh, shepherd of rot style effect. So basically, if you have this and this combined, maybe even cycling this, you can do a um, bunch of damage but just without even attacking to some players. So that's pretty good. Then Garov's Messenger, just classic zombie, the reverse Kitchen Finks, just a good guy. Undying is also pretty decent. Uh, Flashback Marauder, another staple here. He edicts people when he comes into play, so that's pretty decent, especially if you have a Grave Pact out. Diagraph Captain, auto include as well, just... Um, um, pumps all of your zombies and then has a, a kind of relevant ability in that he deals damage to players whenever whenever you sacrifice a zombie, whenever a zombie dies. So it works with living death, it works with your sacrifice outlets and uh, yeah, just, just good. Uh, death Baron, another zombie lord. Cemetery Reaper, yet another zombie lord and he makes zombies. Bone Dancer, this guy is pretty decent. He, I mean, not super exciting, but he's, he's a solid guy. He can reanimate some dude in the graveyard. And in 4-on-4, four four, you will normally have uh, some player that will be unprotected and can be a, a target for, for this guy. So hopefully he can steal some stuff. A Nathy Mancer, uh, well, yeah. This guy is pretty decent too. He has an earth so he can come back for more or he can come back with living death or stuff like that. And he punishes uh, kind of five color control decks like the one I showed uh, uh, a couple of episodes ago. Uh, he can deal a bunch of damage to, to this out of nowhere. And then just another lord here. Just this is like a random lord. Then moving on to four, we have the western and the Eastern Paladins just uh, kills white and green creatures. Vengeful Death, uh, dead. This does kind of like a Diagraph Captain style effect. Um, yeah, not much to say. This is the biggest zombie lord of them all, the Undead War Chief. Pretty good guy, pretty amazing. Undead Alchemist, one of the new guys from Innistrad. Uh, yeah, this guy is pretty decent because you you basically mill players, but you don't hit creatures, so it doesn't really interfere with your living death effects. And whenever you do hit a creature, you can make a bunch of zombies. 
and then you can use that with the shepherd abroad or the lich lord and that kind of things those sort of things and then afterwards you can just sacrifice this guy to one of your sacrifice outlets and then attack with a bunch of zombies for real damage so he's pretty decent then soulless one just a giant fatty Corlash, basically here because he's a zombie and we have a bunch of swamps not the most exciting but he's okay Graveborn Muse, you have to be a little careful with uh, this girl because she can kill you. Um, but yeah, she's pretty decent, kind of like a Phyrexian Arena style effect, can get you a couple of cards. Again, you have Sacrifice Outlets if she gets out of hand. Grave Defiler, kind of like a Zombie Lord as well, lets us get some card advantage, put some zombies into, uh, into our hand. Gloom Drifter, just some general removal. Balthor we spoke about already, and then the two Paladins. Then on 5 we have a Vengeful Pharaoh, which is pretty good in our, in our graveyard. We have one or two ways of actually milling ourselves, and uh, if this guy dies or he is milled, he can also help protect us, which is pretty cool as well. The Noxious Ghoul, this guy is another basically Wrath everyone else kind of effect, so he's pretty decent. The Haven Ghoul Lich, he is one of the new ones, and uh, yeah, he's pretty amazing too. Allows us to recur all of your dead zombies in case you don't hit one of those living deaths or something like that. And yeah, pretty good guy. Then uh, Grungrin, he was one of the other options for a commander. Uh, he's cool because he is removal and he can get pretty big. And he can go with some pretty sick combos with all the with all the um, removal and stuff like that, uh, with all the recursion and stuff like that. For example, with this guy, he is basically pretty pretty amazing because for each black you pay, you get to just put up a one percent counter on this thing. So that's pretty amazing. And okay, and then if you have a, a rooftop storm out, which is something that I'll show in a moment. Um, Basically, Rooftop Storm makes all your zombies cost zero, and then you can recast this guy every turn, and you can put infinite plus one plus one counters on this guy. Um, again, as I said before, infinite, I don't really like normally infinite combos, but this card is good, this card is good, and Rooftop Storm is good. So I'm not going to not have one of those in my deck um, just because there's an infinite combo that goes on with them, right? Uh it might be that, I don't know, I, I never had that happen to me. I had that happen against me once, but never, I never had that happen. Uh, I don't know if I would use it. Maybe, maybe not. Depends on what the other people are doing. If they're doing something uh, a bit jerky, then yeah, I might as well. Then Corpse Connoisseur, he isn't the most exciting, but he gets our Grave Crawler into the into the graveyard or he's kind of like a tutor if you have one of the lands or um, where is the guy Lord of the Undead something that helps you get your creatures back you can act as a tutor and also if you have a living death or something coming up um, you can put another zombie into your graveyard then at the top of the curve we have Twisted Abomination that goes to get a swamp then Micaeus because Micaeus is just Amazing, and he should be in every black deck. And then Geth, Lord of the Vault. Uh, another amazing guy. And yeah, he happens to be a zombie, so uh, not much to say there. Let's move on a bit there. Uh, yeah, let's just move on to this side. So, here are those Living Death style effects that I was talking about. Living Death itself. It's Wrath plus gets all your zombies back from the graveyard. Patriarch's bidding just gets all your zombies back, and then Zombie Apocalypse does the the same thing, um, brings their zombie backs. And if people have a human, then kills those, so that's pretty decent as well. Then we have a couple of enchantments that make zombies endless ranks of the dead, makes a bunch of more zombies if you have some already, so it can get pretty out of hand pretty fast. Tombstone stairwell, this thing is pretty decent. What it does, it it has Cumulative upkeep. Uh, if I can get it here, there we go. And then basically, what it does is at the beginning of each upkeep, 
Each player puts a 2-2 two -two zombie with a haste for each card in his, in his graveyard and then exiles them at the end of turn. So the idea is that you get a bunch of blockers during other people's turns and then during your turn you have a bunch of attackers and that's uh, pretty decent. And also it works nicely with, again, Shepard of Roth and the Lich Lord of Wounds and those kind of things. Then here is that Rooftop Storm I was talking about. One of the main reasons to play blue. I just love this card. Basically makes all of your zombies free. And what's amazing for uh, with this card as well is that since your commander is a zombie, you can play your commander for zero, which is pretty amazing. Sure, if he dies, you actually have to pay the two extra mana for each time he dies on top of this. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, Thrax him under for two, and then four, and then six is pretty decent. Because uh, otherwise, if Thrax dies like twice, you're basically not ever casting him anymore. But with this, you are, and a bunch of times, so that's pretty good. And then here, what we have is a couple of Crusade style effects or something like that. So, Coat of Arms just is pretty much a finisher if you have a bunch of zombies on the battlefield. It can make them gigantic. Um, Door of Destinies is kind of the same thing. He basically is similar to Code of Arms. Every time you play a, a zombie, this gets a counter, and then create zombies get plus one, plus one count, plus one, plus one for each counter on this. And then the last one is Cage Sun, which basically doubles your your mana and pumps your guys. So pretty decent, and it's only for you. So that's pretty decent. Then this uh, we have a bunch of card advantage cards, so and tutor. So Grim Tutor and the Monarch Tutor are the two tutors that I wanna I wanna play. I don't really like Vampiric and Imperial Seal and those so much because they make you lose a uh, draw step. So I'm not the biggest fan of those. I used to be, but not anymore now. I tend to play these that just trade for a card and that's and that's it just cost you some tempo uh, then on the card advantage side we have Phyrexian Arena a classic Rhystic Study another classic Recurring Insight just because we don't have that much card advantage and we just want something that goes big uh, without being a creature that is not a zombie like uh, Consecrate Sphinx, Sphinx or something like that and then Skull Clamp Another amazing combo with our grave crawler here, and just a good card overall. And then in this column we have a bunch of just other cards. Uh, a couple of wraths you always need. Decree of pain is the best, and damnation is pretty decent. Also, sick draw uh, art. Uh, then grave pact we already spoke about. I only play grave pact. I don't play the um, what's his name. Um, uh, Butcher of Malachar. I don't play that guy, just this, because I really want to play only zombies as creatures. Then Call to the Grave is pretty amazing too, basically the Abyss for everybody else, so pretty good. Siphon Flesh, just some um, Edicts for everyone. Soul Ring, one of the only ramp cards in our deck. Um, Expedition Map, just because it helps us get one of our really important lands, like... Uh, Cabal Coffers or one of the utility lands that I'll see that I'll show you guys in a while. And then Altar of Dementia. This card is actually pretty good in this deck. It doesn't look so amazing, but it is actually very, very good. You can either because the thing is you have a bunch of, of lords here and stuff like coat of arms and these things. So your zombies are not really like two ones or stuff. They are a lot of the times like five fours or six somethings. So this thing is pretty good there because it mills for a relatively large amount. I have milled people with this. That's one of the. It basically you want to do two things here. If you have a bunch of zombies and you have one of those decks that just gain a gazillion life and you can't really kill them, you can deck them. And I have done that before, and it works. It's possible. Alternatively, you can also mill yourself, which is pretty good with all of your living death and zombie apocalypse and Patriot spitting style effects. So, yeah, pretty good card. Then, moving to the lands, uh, as you can see, blue is kind of... Um, blue is 
kind of intensive. I mean, intensive. We have a couple of double blue cost of cards. Uh, red is basically not much at all. We have like um, Anthiomancer, this guy that doesn't even need red just for the ability. So red is really just a splash for him and the commander. So we're going to play very uh, few red sources. Um, so let's just move this around here. So basically a bunch of swamps, then Dragon Skull Summit and Drowned, Drowned Catacombs, Tainted Isles, Sunken Ruins, Command Tower as always, Vesuva, and then the tools. Blood Crypt, Watery Grave, Underground Sea and Badlands. You see, for example, I don't even play Tropical Island. And that's because I don't really want to play any land that doesn't produce black. Because black is pretty much all we all we need here. So hopefully all of our lands produce black. And these are all the fetch lands we can play. Cabal Coffers can ramp us into a pretty large amount. And then Urborg, just because we have a bunch of cards that are in swamps and some of our cards care about swamps. Um, like the Corlash and those guys. And then moving on here, we have our utility lands. So basically lands that, okay, Shizo and Bajuka Bog do produce black. So is this, and then some cards that produce just colorless. So Shizo helps her Thraximunder gain fear or a green rim or some other guys just gives them fear. Uh, so pretty decent. Bajuka Bog, kind of an auto include because there are so many decks that likes to abuse uh, graveyards. And even if they don't, you might just want to use it for value to help clear the way for your living death. Phyrexian Tower, just a sacrifice outlet. And Holy Grotto and Voldress Stronghold are one of those lands that help us recur zombies from the graveyard that we were talking about. So that's decent. Dust Bowl, I'm using it, well, Dust Bowl and Homer Path. I'm both using them at almost all my decks now, just because it deals with annoying lands and deals with annoying people st stealing your stuff. So yeah, that is our deck. This is what the curve looks like. Not as aggressive as you'd really want, but that's okay. I, I don't think in Commander you really want to be super aggressive. I think it's a decent curve. Um, yeah, and that is what the deck looks like. Let's go eat some brains then, and yeah, let's see how that works out.